Hello everybody. Welcome to number one doctor channel. Today we will talk about diaphragmatic hernias. Welcome doctor. Welcome to you and your channel subscribers. Doctor. What are types or classification of diaphragmatic hernia? The diaphragmatic hernias can be classified as follows. 1. Congenital. 2. Acquired. A. Uh. Dramatic. B. Hiatal. Doctor. Regarding congenital diaphragmatic hernia. What about the embryology? These hernias can best be understood by reference to the embryology of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is developed by fusion of the following. The septum transversum, which forms the central tendon, and which develops from mesoderm lying in front of the head of the embryo. With the folding of the head, this mesodermal mass is carried ventrally and caudally to lie in its definitive position at the interior part of the diaphragm. During this migration, the cervical myotomes and cervical nerves contribute muscle and nerve supply respectively, thus accounting for the long course of the phrenic nerve C3, 4, 5, from the neck to the diaphragm. The dorsal oesophageal mesentery. The pleuroperitoneal membranes which close the primitive communication between the pleural and peritoneal cavities. A peripheral rim derived from the body wall. In spite of this complex story, congenital abnormalities of the diaphragm are unusual. They may manifest as hernias through the following defects, the foramen of Mergheny, between the xiphoid and costal origins, the foramen of Bokdalek, a defect in the pleuroperitoneal canal, a deficiency of the whole central tendon, a congenitally large oesophageal hiatus. Clinically, hernias through the foramen of Mergheny are usually small and unimportant. Those through the foramen of Bokdalek or through the central tendon are large and present as respiratory distress shortly after birth. Urgent surgical repair is required. The congenital hiatal hernias present with regurgitation, vomiting, dysphagia and progressive loss of weight in small children, they usually respond to conservative treatment and nursing the child in a sitting position. If this fails, surgical repair is necessary. Doctor, what about traumatic diaphragmatic hernias? These are comparatively rare and follow blunt, crush, injuries to the chest or abdomen, or penetrating injuries such as stab wounds, which implicate the diaphragm. The left diaphragm is far more often affected than the right, which is protected by the liver and is accompanied by herniation of the stomach and spleen into the thoracic cavity. The gas-filled stomach lying in the left chest after a crush injury may be mistaken for attention pneumothorax on chest x-ray. Passage of an esophagastric tube or ingestion of a small amount of contrast material confirms the diagnosis. Treatment comprises urgent surgical repair through either the chest or abdomen. Doctor regarding the acquired hiatal hernias. What about the classification? These are divided into sliding 90%, rolling 10%. In the sliding variety, the stomach slides through the hiatus and is covered in its interior aspect with a peritoneal sac while the posterior part is extraperitoneal. It thus resembles an inguinal hernia and glissade. This type of hernia produces both the effects of a space occupying lesion in the chest and disturbances of the cardio-oesophageal sphincter mechanism. In the rolling or paraoesophageal hernia, the cardia remains in position but the stomach rolls up anteriorly through the hiatus, producing a partial volvulus. Because the cardio-oesophageal mechanism is intact, there are no symptoms of regurgitation. These hernias probably represent a progressive weakening of the muscles of the hiatus. They occur in the obese, middle-aged and elderly, and are four times more common in women than in men. Clinically, most are symptomless but when they occur, symptoms fall into three groups. 1. Mechanical, produced by the presence of the hernia within the thoracic cavity, cough, dyspnea, palpitations, hiccup. 2. Reflux, resulting from incompetence of the cardiac sphincter burning retrostinal or epigastric pain aggravated by lying down or stooping, and which may be referred to the jaw or arms, thus simulating myocardial ischemia. Alcalis provide relief. In severe cases, spillover into the trachea may cause pneumonitis. 3. The effects of oesophagitis, stricture formation with dysphagia and bleeding, which may be acute or occult. 
Doctor. What about the treatment of acquired hiatal hernias? Sliding hiatus hernias are treated symptomatically. If symptoms of reflux and oesophagus are troublesome, laparoscopic repair is performed, otherwise they may be left. Paroesophageal rolling hernias are usually asymptomatic, but potentially more serious with the risk of complete gastric volvulus into the chest. Should this occur, urgent surgical repair is indicated. Thanks doctor for excellent informations. Thanks for you and for your channel subscribers. Thanks for watching hope to see you again in more next videos. But please don't forget to like and share our videos and subscribe to our accounts in social media and links below each video. With my best witches. Doctor. 8 Fomid.